A common mistake most businesses make when getting started with social media is being over-eager. It's really tempting to immediately start creating videos, publishing your viewpoints, and commenting on the posts of others. But moving too quickly at first isn't likely to drive the results you're looking for. Instead, take the time from the beginning to develop a social media strategy. A strategy allows you to identify the goals you want to achieve, then map out the specific steps you'll need to commit to on social media in order to reach the results you're after. It's an opportunity to organize both high-level themes as well as campaign-specific details for your social media and a way to make these efforts accessible for multiple collaborators. Every social media strategy looks different from the next, especially in terms of detail. Small businesses should aim to create a concise plan of a few pages, while a large, complex enterprise brand might have a much lengthier social media strategy guiding their teams. What matters is that the strategy is actionable, meaning it's easy to understand and apply, so your efforts in creating it actually help guide the development of your social media campaigns. So what does a social media strategy actually look like? First, you want to define the goals you're looking to achieve with your use of social media so you can ensure any campaign you create in the future is in support of these outcomes. Choose goals for your social media marketing that align with the priorities of your organization over the next few weeks, months, or quarters. For example, if your company is expanding and looking to hire 50 new positions, you might set a goal to increase referral traffic from social media to the career pages on your website by 15% and double the number of applicants applying to open positions on LinkedIn. This is the most important section to get right, as it impacts all the decisions you make throughout your plan, so take your time in deciding what results are the best to focus on. Next, identify the audiences you're trying to reach on social media by building out marketing personas to describe the different types of customers who are interested in your offerings. Getting clear on your customers' demographics, challenges, and goals will help you better personalize your messaging on social media so it's relevant to their specific needs. Moving on, build out a section defining the topics you'll cover in your messaging and the content formats you'll use to best package these messages for distribution. The topics are the high-level themes of interest to your audience and aligned to what you do as a business. Some of these should be educational, entertaining, or promotional. For instance, Thrive Market, an e-commerce retailer selling natural and organic food products, uses Pinterest to share recipes, shopping lists for entertaining guests, and articles on navigating your own wellness. They've intentionally curated content on subjects of interest to their health-conscious customers in formats aligned with the channels they're using to find this type of information. Which brings us to the next section, deciding what channels are the right investment. You want to be active where your customers are spending time, but not spread yourself too thin. Research where your audience is most active on social media and determine which of these destinations you can have the most impact on given the resources it may require. The next section should outline the programs, campaigns, and tactics you'll use to organize all of your social media marketing commitments. Programs are the ongoing initiatives you'll focus on with social media long-term, Campaigns are the short-term activities with a start and an end date, and the tactics are all the important actions you'll take to ensure each program and campaign comes together as planned. Building out this section will help you estimate the required budget, resources, and staffing needed to bring these social media activities to life. And last but not least, this final section is all about determining your publishing schedule. This way you're clear on how often you're sharing content across these channels and organizing the timelines of all your activities across an editorial calendar. Consider adding these sections to your strategy to more thoughtfully plan your social media marketing so you avoid being overeager and instead you're results oriented from the start. There's no guarantees with social media marketing. 
even with the best strategy in place, you might not achieve the results you're after. But you're more likely to when you're consistently measuring your performance to cater your social media efforts to what's working and shifting your focus away from lackluster activities. Social media measurement is the practice of setting meaningful goals, tracking your progress in achieving those results, and using this performance data to inform your decision making. What is a meaningful social media goal? An outcome that's relevant and valuable to your business, achievable in a given time frame, and straightforward to measure. For instance, growing your audience on social media by 10% in the next 90 days, or doubling the conversion rate of your paid social campaigns by next quarter are both examples of meaningful goals. There are three primary social media goals to consider. Conversions, engagement, and awareness. Conversion goals like earning sales or generating leads are the most important type as they're the most valuable actions a person can take when engaging with your social media. The next category are engagement goals, which are less important than conversions, but indicate the amount and quality of interactions your social media campaigns are driving. Like, for example, when a social post earns a significant number of shares and comments, it's an indication that your content was relevant enough to drive conversation and feedback from audiences. And the third category is awareness goals, which are important, but should be the last priority as they only indicate the number of people that saw a particular campaign. Each goal provides useful information and a different viewpoint into your progress. The best case scenario is to monitor a mix of goals, but for some campaigns, one goal will suffice. As you're deciding what goals to focus on, consider how you'll track your progress in reaching them by choosing complementary metrics and relevant measurement tools. Metrics are a unit of measure that indicate how far along you are in reaching a specific goal. For example, if the goal is growing your audience on social media by 10% in 90 days, a metric you could look to is the change in the number of followers on each social network. If your goal is improved brand awareness, then metrics like impressions, views, and reach would be helpful for monitoring your efforts on TikTok and Instagram specifically. While there's many to choose from, pick metrics that indicate your progress, ones that are well-established in the industry, and are straightforward to calculate using the right tools. It's common to rely on a mix of measurement tools, Often this toolkit is comprised of out-of-the-box analytics tools provided by the social networks in addition to third-party tools. Pick tools that help you measure the metrics you've identified and save you time tracking your social media activities. And finally, generate reporting from these tools so you can reference the performance from your recent social media efforts and use it to make more informed marketing decisions. Create reports on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis on each channel you're using so you're aware of your overall progress. It's also a good idea to generate reports after each campaign is completed so you can assess how it performed, lessons learned, and what to do differently next time. Review these reports for elements that may have impacted performance that you could duplicate again, like your coverage of certain topics, use of select content formats, or mentions from prominent voices. These insights indicate what aspects of your social media are most appealing to your audience, and it's exactly the kind of feedback you should adapt to for continued results. Success with social media marketing is certainly not guaranteed, but it is far more tangible when you continually measure your approach with care. If you're trying to reach everyone on social media, chances are you may reach no one. Instead, identify who your audience is by creating marketing personas as part of your social media strategy. Targeting the right audience on social media is so important because understanding their demographics, challenges, and goals can inform how you personalize your messaging. This matters as 62% of consumers said a brand would lose their loyalty if they're served irrelevant experiences, according to Statista. To better cater to your customers, develop marketing personas, which are semi-fictitious profiles that represent your ideal customers and include details about them based on your experience and research into their background, 
motivations, and more. The point of personas is to have them act as a single source of truth on who your audience is so you can reference them again when you're creating your social media campaigns. This information about your customers can come from observations, reviewing existing analytics data from your website, social media, your retail locations, CRM, or other contact points, as well as formal market research like conducting a survey, running a focus group, or through an ethnographic interview. Start putting together your own personas by organizing your customers into groups based on shared characteristics and then assign demographics and behaviors that accurately define them. For example, uh, a yoga studio might have three personas, college students, working parents, and retirees, based on the time of day each usually participates in the studio's classes. Begin by naming each customer persona with a specific nickname to make it easy to reference these different groups, like yogi parents for the working parents persona. From there, clarify the most relevant demographics of the persona, like their average age range, job title, education level, geographic location, common personality traits, and their interests. The yoga studio could collect this information from their clients when they're signing up for classes for the first time, combined with third-party research on yoga habits in the U.S., After that, the most important insights to include with a persona are their behaviors and qualities that influence their purchasing decisions, specifically their unique challenges and goals. The challenges are the pain points the persona is experiencing as it relates to your offerings, which will help you better explain why your solution can help address their unique needs. For instance, one of the pain points of the yogi parent's persona might be finding time between raising kids and working to prioritize going to a yoga studio and attending a session. A persona's goals are the motivating factors that drive them to take a particular action. Pinpoint what will uniquely encourage each persona to make a purchase. This way, you can get more clear on how you might trigger this behavior with relevant experiences on social media. The last section to include is your persona's communication preferences, which includes where they prefer to share information with others and what news sources they typically reference. Here, you'd list the social media they most often use, creators they follow, podcasts they listen to, publications they read, newsletters they subscribe to, etc. For the yogi parents' persona, they might follow influencers on TikTok and Instagram known for clean eating and meal prep, and read publications like Yoga Journal or Mind Body Green. While your personas are always a work in progress, use them as a litmus test for ensuring all of your social media campaigns are aimed at reaching the right people, your customers. To unlock the full potential of social media marketing for your organization, hire a social media manager. Often the effort and expertise required to succeed with social media is underestimated, leading to lackluster results since the medium isn't given proper support from the start. The best case scenario is to add a social media manager to your team as they have the experience and skills to properly manage platforms like Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok to build awareness, drive engagement, and improve conversions for your business. A social media manager's focus in terms of channels will vary depending on the type of organization, how big their company is, the complexity of their marketing activities, and the size of their audience on these channels like how a social media manager at a small nonprofit may run the organization's LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter accounts as long as the size of their communities are manageable. Compared to a social media manager at a global brand who may only work on the company's TikTok account due to the resources it requires, and they've got a big team supporting them. While the channels they're responsible for depend on their organization, their responsibilities are usually consistent across strategy, content creation, and community management. From the strategy perspective, the social media manager will not only contribute to defining what your strategy should be on social media, but helps make sure that plan actually gets executed. 
This is why it's particularly important to include the social media manager in the process of building out your strategy so you get feedback from them on what's actually possible to accomplish. The social media manager not only has the hands-on experience on what strategies drive results on each channel, they're more aware of the latest social media developments you must adapt to, and they're in tune with how other companies are using these networks. And that's one of their biggest contributions to the marketing team, helping your organization ensure your social media strategy is ambitious, modern, and differentiated. Another important responsibility of a social media manager is, of course, content creation. The act of developing engaging text, photos, graphics, videos, and other formats to engage customers. Much faster pace than other marketing mediums, more frequent messaging is required to drive the conversation on social media and maintain the attention of customers. For this reason, plus the time commitment necessary to capture, edit, optimize, and publish content, this is the responsibility that takes up most of a social media manager's time. Whether this messaging is promotional, educational, entertaining, or a mix, the social media manager should fuel both proactive and reactive conversations from your firm's accounts. Proactive content are the messages where your organization is starting or leading the conversation on an important topic of interest to customers and aligned to your goals. Compared to reactive content, which are communications in response to an existing conversation that your company would like to be a part of and thus decides to chime in. A strong example of this can be seen with Weight Watchers, the weight loss program as their proactive content on social media often features easy-to-make recipes and advice for how to successfully follow their program, which are likely key elements of their strategy. On the other hand, when it comes to reactive content, the brand sometimes responds to emerging food trends with their input on how Weight Watchers members can participate. It's the social media manager's job to balance both kinds of conversations to ensure the organization is working towards accomplishing its strategic goals while also staying relevant. The third set of responsibilities are community management, which are a social media manager's ongoing efforts to maintain a strong relationship with customers and partners. It's not enough to start a conversation or simply reply once to an existing one as these discussions need to be maintained in order to build a long-lasting connection with audiences. Most of all, your company needs to show up consistently to become trusted, whether through regularly answering customer questions, providing exclusive discounts, or otherwise. Effective community management is often the result of a social media manager investing in activities that don't scale, like responding to each and every comment. That's often what it takes to build a one-of-a-kind social media presence on behalf of a company that breaks through the noise and really delivers business results. And there you have it. Those are the key responsibilities of this pivotal role. To make a lasting impact with your investment in these channels, a social media manager is a critical hire. You don't need to be active on every social network. Instead, make informed decisions about which channels make the most sense for your organization to use in order to reach your customers. This matters as having an impact on a social network and driving business value from your presence there requires a serious investment of time and resources. You don't want to waste your limited bandwidth on maintaining the wrong social networks. To determine which options are a match for your company, recognize that there's different types of social channels with unique use cases, strengths, and weaknesses to account for. One of the most popular types are community-based social networks like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. These are social networks where users populate the content in their own feed by choosing to follow certain accounts, usually their friends, family, coworkers, and other connections. Consumers use these social networks to publicly post updates on their lives, communicate with their communities, and stay up to date on what's happening with these contacts. 
While these networks all have complex algorithms to help populate engaging content for users, they're heavily organized around an individual's social graph to ensure relevancy. For businesses, a primary benefit of this type of network is the ability to advertise to a vast audience of engaged users at scale with personalized content and sophisticated targeting. Each of these channels have their own nuances and use cases for businesses. So let's go down the list and define what makes them special. Facebook is a good starting point given it's the social network that helped take social media to the mainstream despite its challenges in recent years. Many businesses still use Facebook to share text, links, video, images, and events. But most organizations find success on the network when investing in paid advertising campaigns. Meta, Facebook's parent company, owns several popular social media services, which is a key advantage given advertisers can target audiences across platforms from one interface. Next is Instagram. Also owned by Meta, Instagram is arguably the most popular social media app offered by the company in terms of its continuing influence on culture. A highly visual social network, businesses can share images and short-form videos known as stories and reels and connect with creators there to help promote their offerings. The service is particularly ideal for companies selling highly visual, well-designed products like clothing, jewelry, beauty products, home decor, fitness equipment, art, and more. Let's move on to Twitter, which is known for its text-based messages called tweets and its fast-paced conversations leading to up-to-the-minute coverage of current events worldwide. The social network is in a state of transition due to a series of changes from new ownership, which has led many brands to wait to see whether the platform is advertiser-friendly or not. So it's hard to say what its role will be in the social media industry moving forward, despite the company aiming for Twitter to become the digital town square. Another major social channel is LinkedIn, which is a professional network for users looking for a job to connect with people in their industry showcase their expertise, and improve their professional skills. Owned by Microsoft, LinkedIn is a widely trusted channel, ideal for companies looking to recruit talent by showcasing their employer brand and advertising to business-minded customers. Especially relevant to B2B organizations, LinkedIn provides advertisers with the ability to target relevant individuals based on their professional titles they've listed on their profiles. Remember these community-based networks as you organize your social media mix. Lean back and relax. That's what discovery-focused social platforms are all about, as they aim to entertain and inspire you with engaging content suited to your interests. TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, and Pinterest are networks where users spend most of their time discovering content for entertainment purposes or to learn instead of connecting with people they know. While anyone has the ability to upload their content to these channels, only a small percentage of their overall audience actually does publish, which is usually creators and businesses. Users discover quality content on these networks by relying on the recommendations provided by their advanced algorithms, using their search functionality, and following creators. TikTok and YouTube are where people spend the most time on social media, as audiences spend an average of 45 minutes per day there, surpassing the other major networks. For businesses, the opportunity with discovery-focused social platforms is to earn organic visibility for your messaging amongst new audiences and advertising on these destinations. Let's take a closer look, beginning with TikTok, which has been one of the biggest disruptors of social media in recent years, due to its superior algorithm's ability to serve relevant videos. TikTok is a leading destination for sharing short-form videos with audio, often as part of trending challenges and memes that many join in on by adding their own spin to the topic. Businesses benefit from TikTok by working with creators on the platform, advertising with user-generated content, creating original sounds and songs made for distribution on TikTok, and by developing original video series that sometimes incorporate trends. 
Next is YouTube, the popular Google-owned platform for watching videos, usually of a few minutes in length, covering every subject from makeup to movie reviews to recipes. Businesses can launch their own YouTube channel to share original programming with their subscribers as a way to build a stronger connection, given they're able to go into more depth and reach new audiences in the long term through searches on YouTube or on Google as these videos can rank as part of the search results on the world's number one search engine. Plus, advertisers can serve ads before, during, or after a popular video is played on the platform to target the right audiences at scale, building awareness, and driving conversions. Now, let's move on to Twitch, a live streaming network where viewers mainly watch live broadcasts from their favorite streamers playing video games while they provide commentary. Streamers, which is what creators are called on Twitch, also host cooking shows, DJ sets, talk shows, and provide coverage of esports. Owned by Amazon, the primary use cases of Twitch for businesses is reaching younger audiences ages 16 to 34 through advertising campaigns or by sponsoring popular streamers. More of a niche network compared to the other discovery-focused platforms due to its smaller audience size, there's a big opportunity to stand out on Twitch because it's less saturated. And finally, Pinterest is a visual search engine for discovering, bookmarking, and organizing inspiring images, known as pins, meant to encourage creativity. Pinterest is often used to spur ideas for weddings, interior design, recipes, and other creative projects. Companies that sell visual, consumer-facing products tend to benefit the most from Pinterest as a means of driving short-term results with targeted ads and long-term conversions with search. That's because people come to Pinterest to purchase, as 85% of weekly pinners purchase items based on pins they've seen from brands. It's your turn to decide which of these channels make sense for you so you can thoughtfully pair your messaging with the entertaining experiences people expect to see here. Not all socializing online happens in public. Social messaging apps are another category of social media channels where people send private messages to each other one-on-one, -on -one, in a small group chat, or directly with businesses. Unlike texting, WeChat, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and Snapchat are free to use, available internationally, offer lots of functionality for mobile audiences, and sometimes have stronger security, allowing for a secure and private space for family and friends to connect. For businesses, social messaging apps like these are an opportunity to deliver customer service by manually responding to customer outreach or setting up an automated chatbot. Furthermore, Brands can launch ads on these services to reach people for the first time, retarget existing customers, and encourage them to send you a message as a call to action. Let's explore these services in more detail, starting with WeChat, which is one of the most sophisticated social messaging apps available due to its functionality as an all-in-one app. WeChat is a Chinese messaging app where users can communicate with friends, pay bills, buy products, and video chat, which is why it's often referred to as a super app. Because popular apps like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter are blocked by the Chinese government, this is one of the best channels for reaching consumers in China. Businesses driving results on WeChat consistently publish content, invest in advertising, work with creators, known as key opinion leaders in China, and create their own mini-programs. Next is Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp, which are both private messaging services owned by Meta, commonly used for customer service purposes. Businesses mainly use these apps to answer questions from customers in real time, share canned responses to frequently asked questions, or invest in a chatbot to automate different experiences like booking an appointment. In addition, companies can use both services to promote their offerings with targeted advertising in a person's inbox and develop custom integrations like branded chatbots. And finally, there's Snapchat, a social messaging app that pioneered the concept of private messages disappearing after a short period of time. 
What's unique compared to the other messaging apps is that there's content published publicly on Snapchat from select publishers where brands can choose to safely advertise. Companies can also advertise with short video ads in between stories from creators and release their own branded Snapchat lenses and filters for users to include in their content. It's important to note that unlike the other messaging apps, organizations don't really provide customer service on Snapchat since the content shared there is meant to expire. Keep these messaging-based social networks in mind as more conversations move from public to private channels and your business adapts to be where your audience is most active. People trust recommendations more than ads. Whether reading a product review posted by another customer or an answer to an important question, consumers often trust the collective wisdom of other people over companies. That's why review sites and discussion forums are go-to social channels for many as a way of crowdsourcing information to inform purchasing decisions and up-level their knowledge. Let's begin with review sites, which are channels where either reviews are listed on their platform as one of their many offerings, or their primary purpose is to feature reviews. For instance, Yelp is a review site for restaurants and local businesses. TripAdvisor showcases reviews for travel experiences like hotels and excursions. And G2 aggregates user reviews for business software. Compared to Google Business Profile, OpenTable, Amazon, and Facebook that provide a wide range of services, including allowing people to post reviews of products and businesses. Generating reviews for your company matters as it's a way of collecting valuable feedback on how to improve your offerings, and it's a marketing tool for building trust in what you sell. To make the most of either type of review site, first identify which destinations your customers reference for reviews, as these options do vary in relevance depending on the industry you're in. Next, complete a profile for your business on the right review sites by describing what your company does, uploading images of your products or storefront, and filling out the standard details like your website, hours of operation, contact info, and more. The point of this profile is to create a legitimate account to represent your company so you can start collecting reviews about your business for customers to reference in the future. From there, you want to encourage reviews of your business by letting customers know that you want their input, and when you get positive ones, featuring these reviews in your marketing. And finally, while you can't control what reviews are posted about you, other than offering high-quality products, services, and experiences, you should respond to negative reviews. While thanking someone for a positive review is a nice gesture, it's even more important to thoughtfully respond to negative reviews and address the situation, apologizing if necessary. Calmly offer a solution to the issue or set the record straight if it's a misunderstanding, as your responses demonstrate to customers reading your reviews that you value their feedback. Switching gears to discussion forums like Reddit, Quora, and Stack Overflow, these services allow people to ask and answer questions anonymously and join conversations of interest. Reddit is a network of communities called subreddits that cover different topics managed by moderators, And Quora is a question-and-answer network where users collaborate to address questions on a variety of subjects. And Stack Overflow, similar in concept to Quora, is a community specifically for developers focused on asking and answering technical questions related to computer programming. The ability to share insights and chat with others on these forums without sharing your identity allows people to freely ask questions, express their opinions, and offer their expertise. As a result, the conversation on these discussion forums are often more honest and raw, leading to a stronger sense of authenticity in these communities. Advertising is the main way brands benefit from discussion forums, as they're less inundated with ads compared to other social networks, which is both an opportunity and a challenge. Build trust with your customers by strategically using review sites to earn reviews for your business and advertise on discussion forums to gain the attention of the right people. What's really unique about social media 
is the ability to get your message in front of a lot of people quickly, sometimes for free. Often this message comes in the form of organic content, which is sharing useful information across social media that's free to publish. Referred to as organic social, there's no cost to distributing posts with videos, text, and images, but no guarantee your customers are going to see the messages you've shared. While there's still cost to producing organic content, it's what you should mainly share on most networks, given how it's an affordable way of staying in touch with customers long term. When deciding what you'll be publishing on social media, begin by identifying topics that are so valuable that your customers will want to opt in to receive your messaging. I recommend coming up with three to five overarching content themes to direct what topics you'll consistently address on social media. A strong example of this comes from a company selling bed sheets and pillows that addresses the following themes on their social media. Funny commentary related to sleeping and making your bed, giveaways, updates from their retail locations, the philanthropic causes they support, and a sleep-related how-to series. To emulate their success, brainstorm different topic options to narrow in on the themes that are engaging, relevant, and complementary. Choosing engaging topics means that the stories you're telling are sometimes promotional, but also entertaining, educational, or a combo of the three. When a story you're telling on social media is enjoyable, teaches something useful, or expresses your viewpoint on an important topic, it's more likely to be engaging to a customer. It's okay to talk about the benefits of your products and services sometimes, but moving your messaging beyond that is an opportunity to connect with customers in an unexpected way. Next, you want to choose topics that are relevant to your customers. Consider this question. Do they have any reason to care about what you're saying? This is where your marketing personas come into play as the challenges and goals your audiences have should guide which topics you're addressing. For the bedsheet and pillow brand I mentioned, they're likely thinking critically about how to best answer the questions their customers are asking about their sleep routines. And thirdly, these topics need to be complementary to what your company actually does and what the organization is reasonably expected to know. While you certainly have the creative freedom to cover a wide range of topics, it's important the connection between your messaging and what you offer as an organization is clear. This is why it makes sense for the bedsheet brand to make jokes about the challenges of putting on a duvet cover or offer advice on styling bedroom throw blankets, as it's logical for them to have this expertise. Being thoughtful about aligning your themes with your brand can help you build a better understanding of what your company uniquely offers. Lastly, one of the best ways to ensure you're thoughtfully and consistently addressing the themes you've identified is developing an editorial calendar to organize your approach. An editorial calendar is a collaborative document your team can use to plan when certain messages will go live on each social platform in line with your other marketing campaigns. This calendar is often a spreadsheet or part of a marketing tool and coordinates the timing of your messaging and ensures you're balancing activities across each theme and channel. Although some of your messages on social media will be shared in real time to react to important moments, you'll save time by pre-planning a majority of your organic content. Scale your organic messaging to the right audiences by investing in strategic themes that are engaging, relevant and complementary, and of course, organized with an editorial calendar. Targeting the right people at scale is another major benefit of social media marketing. Known as paid social advertising, or paid social for short, it's the process of paying to get your ad's preferred placement on a social media channel to reach a specific audience. These ads are particularly effective as you can quickly reach more of your customers with different variations of an ad and based on these tests, surface the top performing versions. Ultimately, this helps you significantly improve a campaign's performance, an option not possible with many other marketing mediums. Plus, these ads are formatted like organic posts, but with a label indicating they're an ad 
so they don't come across as disruptive to consumers compared to other forms of advertising. You've likely seen examples of these ads yourself as they occasionally appear in the feeds of your favorite social networks alongside the organic posts you're most familiar with seeing. Creating a paid social campaign is distinct from organic social as you're paying for the visibility. Ideally, the results you're seeing provide more value than the cost of the ads. But because you're paying, you're far more likely to achieve the goals you're after if the campaign is optimized correctly with the proper ad creative, bidding strategy, and budget. A common use case of paid social is to support the launch of a new business or product line given you can immediately start promoting it as soon as you have a budget to work with. But in reality, you can use a paid social campaign at any stage of your company's maturity to gain awareness, traffic, engagement leads, and of course, sell your products and services. So what's the best way to successfully structure a paid social campaign to drive results? Start by defining the goal of the campaign which is to either earn some form of awareness like video views or impressions, engagement like clicks and comments, or conversions in the form of sales, job applicants, or email signups, all depending on your circumstances. With a goal in mind, specify the audiences you're trying to reach with this initiative, whether that's families with children, veterans in a particular region, or experienced sales directors. While you do want to get specific to focus the campaign on reaching the right people, don't narrow in so much in the beginning to avoid targeting too small of an audience. Balance is usually your friend when setting up a campaign, given you can decide to get more granular with your targeting and make other optimizations later once the campaign is live. Next, it's time to create ads that reflect your goals and your customers' preferences by producing compelling images or videos paired with engaging copy, often with a call to action. Your creative choices should reflect your brand, showcase your offerings, and stand out amongst the competition, and of course, align with the guidelines of the available ad formats. Each social channel has different ad formats or ad units to choose from, requiring your messaging meet their unique guidelines to ensure your ads get approved and perform. For example, Most ad units have character limits, so the text you're including doesn't get cut off or looks improperly formatted. Another instance would be making sure the videos you're uploading as part of a campaign don't go over the recommended duration or file size. From there, set a budget so you're spending enough to ensure your ads are competitive and earn the placements you're hoping for on a daily basis and throughout the campaign's duration. There isn't an ideal starting budget, as it really depends. Set a budget based on the desired outcome, what makes you comfortable, your company's resources, and then scale up or down as a result of how the campaign is performing. Your initial advertising campaigns on social media will include lots of experimentation. I recommend investing a small portion of your budget on different campaigns across platforms to see which types of ads perform for you and where. And lastly, monitor the progress of your paid ads regularly and adapt future campaigns based on what you've learned from their performance. Follow these steps to target the right people with paid social and drive tangible results. Authenticity is what resonates on social media. Unlike the marketing of the past, not all of your messaging needs to position your organization as this perfect, polished, and highly produced brand. In fact, consumers are looking for the opposite. Whether in the form of organic or paid social, customers want to see raw footage, the challenges you're facing behind the scenes, the processes that help your business run, the beliefs you have, and most of all, the people behind your brand. The goal is to better humanize your brand through using social media so you stand out for your unique point of view that other businesses can't duplicate, building trust in the process. You can't try to manufacture it as humanizing your content happens by establishing a set of values and a perspective for your brand that you consistently act on and communicate about. That's because being authentic and sharing humanizing messaging isn't a formula you can master. 
but the act of knowing what your values and perspective is and committing to them long-term. As a starting point, consider showcasing your team, involving your customers, and striving for better accessibility to begin humanizing your social media activities. No matter what your organization does, it's beneficial to feature your employees and company leadership across social media as people are way easier to relate to. Whether your founder is hosting a live stream on how they started the business or you're showing employees using your products, these moments can help you be more relatable. One example of this that's becoming more common is having your social media manager be the on-screen talent in your messaging, building a relationship with your audience. In a sense, they're acting as the spokesperson for your brand and an in-house creator that is easier for your followers to connect with since they're consistently featured in your content. Another way to humanize your efforts is collaborating with your customers by involving them in your social campaigns, featuring their contributions, and rewarding them for participating. The best results from social media come from having a dialogue with your audience, but it's up to you to start the right conversations and invite customers to participate. Finally, Accessibility should be a priority with your social media activities, so customers with a range of lived experiences are able to consume your content and take part in the discussion. For instance, adding closed captions to your videos shared on social media and ensuring alternative text is included with your images can make your messaging far more accessible. This matters, as there's nothing more humanizing than an openness to be inclusive with your marketing. Embrace authenticity on social media as it'll help humanize your content and move you one step closer to making your marketing more distinctive. Listening is an indispensable part of any conversation. Social media allows companies and consumers to engage in conversation with each other one-on-one in public for everyone to see, unlike any other medium. Both sides benefit But businesses are able to get valuable feedback, deliver customer service, and become part of important discussions when they engage in conversation. But before chiming in, your company must listen to your audience so you understand their direct feedback and have a better sense of the greater dialogue on key topics. This is possible by embracing social media monitoring which is keeping track of your customers' conversations on social media about your brand specifically. As well as investing in social media listening, the process of analyzing the broad discussions on social media about your industry and any other topics of interest to your organization. These similar but distinct forms of analysis are meant to help your company organize the conversations happening on social media into two separate categories. This way, your social monitoring efforts capture feedback about your brand so you can address customer service concerns, adapt to useful input, and manage your reputation. Alternatively, social listening is focused on understanding consumer perceptions in your industry, analyzing your competitors, and staying culturally relevant with trending topics. For example, if a restaurant chain reviews TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram to find questions about their menu items and identify customer service issues, then that's social monitoring. Having said that, if they use social media to pinpoint food trends in certain regions, then that's social listening, as the conversations aren't about their brand, but can impact their business. Most companies will find value in social monitoring as listening and responding to this feedback demonstrates they care about customer input, fostering a connection with them. At a minimum, a majority of organizations will use social listening to get a high-level overview of conversations in their industry and on social media at large so they can react accordingly. However, most won't have the resources to commit to a robust social listening program as big brands are often the firms with the capabilities to get the full value from this intelligence. To begin embracing either social monitoring, social listening, or both, choose the proper tools and consistently produce reporting relevant to your needs. 
Often the social media tools you'll use will help you with both types, but social monitoring is most commonly accomplished by reviewing the mentions from your social media accounts. There's also many third-party tools available like Sprout Social or Hootsuite to keep track of all the mentions of your brand, especially when you're trying to manage a constant influx. What's distinct about these tools compared to the out-of-the-box options is that you can set alerts for specific keywords like your brand name, products, and variations of these terms. Unless you're using a third-party tool, you may miss some of the mentions of your brand and its products, as not every consumer will compliment you or complain using your exact handle. When it comes to social listening, you can manually search any terms on most social channels, but that's not a strategic way to keep track of numerous industry terms and trends. Well-known brands typically need to rely on third-party enterprise tools like Meltwater, Brandwatch, or Sprinkler to properly analyze the conversations across industries at scale. This way, these organizations can more quickly identify trending discussions as they happen that relate to their brand and decide whether or not to react to them in real time. What's most important about your choice of social monitoring or social listening tools is whether it can help generate reporting in a timely manner for your team that's accurate. Reporting for social monitoring needs to curate all the mentions of your brand and variations of related terms so you understand how consumers are reacting and who needs a response. And reporting for social listening must help you identify trends in the conversations around important topics of interest so you can stay up to date and decide when to participate or not. Don't forget to listen on social media as this research is the difference between a well-informed response and an out-of-touch, lackluster reaction. Starting a conversation on social media can help you earn positive attention for your brand. When your business starts a new conversation or chimes in on a broader, relevant discussion on social media, it's an opportunity to provide value and share your expertise in real time. This type of interaction with your customers on social media is known as proactive engagement, the act of initiating the conversation by anticipating your customers' needs and interests. The goal is to earn meaningful engagement and attention for your business through the conversations you're having on social media while educating and entertaining customers. In some cases, you'll start a conversation on a topic that you want your company to be associated with as a thought leader, whether that's eco-friendly farming or something on the stock market. For example, TurboTax, a software for handling tax returns, might use Instagram to begin a discussion on how to facilitate financial literacy amongst teens. While not the same focus as their tax services, it's a subject related enough to their expertise and could be a cause they want to help solve and be associated with as a leader long term. And in other cases, you'll add your input on a timely conversation that's occurring in your industry or across sectors to share your opinion and bring your brand into the conversation. For example, if new tax legislation is announced for small businesses, TurboTax could use YouTube to explain why this development matters and how they can help with next steps. Informed by social listening, proactive engagement can lead to more conversations with customers and the greater social media community, strengthening your brand reputation. At the same time, there's also subjects you want to avoid discussing altogether. To get proactive engagement right, lead the conversations on topics that provide tangible value to your customers, help position you as a market leader, and align to your values. While you don't need to accomplish all three things with every conversation, the point is to foster trust with your audience through your long-term leadership on relevant topics. Ultimately, this is an opportunity to communicate on the overarching themes you've identified and encourage others to join in on the discussion. In a sense, you're acting as a facilitator. To know when to join in on existing conversations unfolding in your industry or add your commentary to greater trends and current events, ask yourself three questions. First off, 
Is this topic relevant to what our company offers or the expertise we have? Secondly, are we able to add any value to the conversation that's entertaining or educational? And lastly, is it appropriate for our brand to discuss this subject matter? If your answer to all three questions is yes, then feel free to add your take to the discussion. Take advantage of social media to proactively direct the conversation in your favor, building trust with your customers, and gaining positive attention for your brand. Responding to your customers on social media is more meaningful than you might think. Taking the time to reply to their questions, thank them for their support, and resolve their issues in a public forum can improve customer loyalty and strengthen your reputation. We can all agree that it just feels good to have your feedback heard and valued. Responding to direct outreach from your customers and your audience at large on social media to thoughtfully resolve an issue or question is known as reactive engagement. It's reactive given your customers are reaching out to your company first, most often in need of customer service support, but sometimes just to offer their feedback or praise. And yes, unfortunately, you might also experience unproductive commentary from trolls that's irrelevant, harmful, hateful, or inappropriate, and in most of those cases, block and ignore it. The goal of reactive engagement is to help retain your customers as consistently answering their questions and resolving their customer service issues can foster loyalty over time. For example, Spotify, the audio streaming service, has used their Spotify Cares Twitter account since 2012 to help customers troubleshoot issues both publicly and privately. Whether a Spotify user has been logged out of their account, accidentally deleted a playlist, or is having payment issues, their team will try to reply with a solution to an issue if it's straightforward. More often, they'll acknowledge the customer's tweet publicly and ask them to send a direct message on Twitter so they can resolve the issue privately. This way, they can ask for their account info and dive into the specifics that shouldn't be shared publicly because of privacy concerns and to limit the reach of negative customer experiences. And that's the general approach your business should follow with reactive engagement. Begin with social monitoring to keep track of messages, comments, and reviews on channels like Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Yelp, or your Google business profile. Next, address all the questions, complaints, and requests for help you receive, whether they're positive or negative, as long as they're constructive. Ideally, aim to answer their question or resolve the issue with your initial response, but often the complexity of a scenario will require you to go back and forth with the person. Regardless, if it's resolvable within the first reply or needs to be moved to private messaging, always acknowledge their outreach publicly so they know where to go for continued support. This is also important so anyone watching your exchange or stumbling across your interaction in their feed sees that you're actively responding to customers on social media. Also, the speed of your response is important given the fast pace of social media as customers have come to expect a timely answer, so aim to respond within 24 hours at the latest. While crafting a response quickly is essential, it can never be at the expense of providing quality information and personalized care that resolves their problem or complaint. When responding to your customers on social media, it should always be conversational, professional, concise, and require minimal effort from the customer. For example, if a customer tweeted at Spotify Cares saying that their downloaded music won't play, an effective response from the brand would be to address them by name, apologize for the inconvenience, attempt to move the conversation to private messaging, and assure them that you'll work to address the issue. You'll have to keep in mind character limits on certain platforms and other channel and context-specific nuances to your response, but this is a solid framework to build from. Lastly, not all the outreach you'll receive will be in the form of a question or customer service request and will simply be a friendly comment or feedback. 
As best you can, acknowledge these messages, comments, and reviews by thanking the person for their input and indicating how you might use their feedback or follow up with friendly banter. Strengthen your brand loyalty by providing world-class customer care on social media with meaningful responses that quickly resolve your customers' most pressing issues.